LGBTQ groups are praising the signing of a package of new laws aimed at helping transgender and gender nonconforming residents. Two of the laws aim to ease the process of changing one's name or title on official documents. Senate Bill 139 allows the removal of gendered language on marriage certificates and House Bill 2590 allows for a person to get a new marriage certificate to reflect a legal name change. And joining us to hear more about these bills are State Senator Sarah Feigenholz, whose district includes the north side of Chicago, and Shannon Parker, Director of Strategic Partnerships with Howard Brown Health. Welcome both of you back to Chicago tonight. Senator Feigenholz, you, good to have you. Senator Feigenholz, uh, walk us through these two laws, if you would. Okay, happy to do that. Um, two bills. First of all, parents, you should know that Illinois, who usually brings up uh, the back of the train, is the second state in the country to have done both Senate Bill 139 and uh, 20, House Bill 2590. Um, Senate Bill 139 is about being able to change your gender markers on your marriage certificate, even retroactively. And, um, and well, actually, to change it from um, husband and wife to non-binary or whatever a person chooses. The second bill it is allows you to retroactively change your gender on your marriage certificate. And Shannon Parker, how significant uh, are these changes in Illinois law to the trans community and, and, and to the community at large? Oh my goodness, um, how, how, how aren't they, you know? Um, as the Senator was saying, when you think about these bills that were passed, really what they do is they remove more burdens, right? They remove more injustices and barriers that trans folks in particular face on a day-to-day -day basis. When we think about the LGBTQ family, right? Of all of the identities, it's the T in that acronym, right? It's transgender people who really do shoulder that burden. When we think about the highest rates of family rejection, suicide, murder in our LGBTQ community, again, um, it's transgender people who really do suffer. So in thinking about what the Senator was just saying, these bills passing into laws actually do help to alleviate more of those burdens that we as a community face um, on a daily basis. And I'll tell you something, just in 2021 alone, 31 trans people and non-conforming folks were fatally shot or they were actually killed by other violent means. And the thing is, is this is that we say at least, because again, a lot of those stories go unreported or they go misreported. And to add to that, the majority of those folks were black and Latinx transgender women. So Senator Feigenholz, when you hear all that, um, on, you know, on a specific uh, level, what was it like for trans folks to deal with marriage certificates in Illinois, you know, if they didn't want to be called Mr. or Mrs. And, 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 and have proper titles on there? You know, Paris, people come to their legislators with real life, everyday challenges. And our office um, talked to a lot of people you know, with, who had had some really horrible experiences. One uh, spouse being denied hospital visitation, another denied their employer's health insurance coverage because their, uh, all of their uh, records were not aligned as far as gender. Um, and, and depending on where in this state <laughs> um, they live and these hospitalizations or visitations are necessary, this puts a lot of people in danger. Um, as, as Shannon talked about, you know, the transgender community is disproportionately victimized. And, you know, as a legislator, I feel that every barrier we can eliminate reduces that stigma, reduces that stress, and gives us an opportunity to move this issue forward for all of our transgender so, siblings. So 
so this becomes an issue of life and death. Shannon Parker, it's not just marriage certificates, but uh, the LGBTQ community is, is trying to get these kinds of changes for all manner of documents like driver's licenses. So how important is that to, to be able to, to have the same thing? Um, and what kinds of documents that would you like to see uh, updated? Absolutely. So when we talk about the importance of those modernization acts, right, making sure that systems talk to each other and making sure that trans folks have access to those everyday documents that allow you access to federal buildings, that allow you access to a job, right? Um, we're talking about IDs. We're talking about birth certificates. We're talking about those everyday things that our non-transgender counterparts don't even think about, right? Because again, those are basic rights. Those are basic things that everyone has access to. So again, as the Senator just said, which was so great, talking about removing barriers for trans folks in order to live fuller, richer, more robust lives. And, and That's what all of this is about. Shannon, you mentioned so, the violence. I'm sorry, you mentioned the violence no, no, tar targeting the trans community. I mean, this comes as there's been a lot of legislation uh, in the past year in other states rolling back rights uh, for for the transgender community, um, dealing with the athletics and, and other things. I mean, it just feels like this community has been targeted in a number of states. How has that impacted your community? It's, it's been hard, you know, and I will say that being an Illinoisan, um, we are very fortunate to, to live on this magical little island, if you will. Um, not perfect, but my goodness, um, when we think about some of our more Southern states, um, when we think about some of our states who are ran by, you know, other parties even, um, we see a lot of challenges, right? We see those daily fleecing of rights from um, hospital access to sports, to bathroom bills. So many things are happening on a day-to-day -day basis that are absolutely demoralizing um, to our community. So again, uh, with champions like Senator Feichenholz and other folks who were so such strong supporters of those bills, we are moving in the right direction. S Senator Feigenholz, um, before we leave, I want to get to another bill that the governor signed yesterday, which does away with a, a long-held statute in Illinois that criminalized the transmission of HIV. First of all, tell us tell us what that statute was and why it was important to get rid of it. Well, I mean, I, I think that. Um, Historically, there was um, a, a lot of stigma around HIV and AIDS. Now we're in a much different space where people are much more understanding, welcoming, and we have, um, I, I believe it was Senator, S Senator Peters who said, prep, not prison, yes. which I thought was a very uh, interesting little soundbite. Um, and it's true, we, we've come a long way in this state, Paris. Illinois is a beacon, as uh, Shannon said. Other states are, are dialing it backwards, but not Illinois. We're dialing it forward on equity, on, ju on justice. And um, believe me, I like this. It's, you know, I, I was in the General Assembly for many years when it was very difficult to get a bill like this, these two bills passed, and I couldn't be happier. I'm not sure we would have even been able to do the repeal of the HIV um, criminalization bill, but we're in a new place and we, we've actually got bipartisan support on some of these bills. So um, things seem to be calming down, cooler heads are prevailing, and we're doing the right thing for everyone in Illinois, including our trans siblings. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Our thanks to State Senator Sarah Feigenholz and Shannon Parker. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much.